So last week, the SOFA 2.13 release went really well. Um, there was a, a lot of good press about it and uh, downloads and sales were up, which is great. I'm not gonna share those numbers, but um, I wanted to show some of the press. This is fun. So number one, uh, Mac Stories. Mac Stories has always been super generous uh, to me and to Sofa, writing about Sofa a lot in the past. Um, and this time was no exception. They wrote a really nice review um, talking about the new features um, and even showing some love to the pile again, which I kind of love because I love the pile. It's like one of my favorite features, even though it's not new for this release, but um, I really dig that. So you can go read that article. That'll be, all these links will be in the show notes below. Uh, one of the big ones, which uh, is really awesome is 9to5Mac wrote about this, wrote about Sofa and the update. And again, wrote a really nice review um, they did a, a you know super generous job with screenshots and, and talking through all the new features and stuff like that. So I think um, a bulk of the like new downloads and sales and stuff were really driven by this article, uh, which is super exciting. Um, that was a it was a good day for sure. So this will, this link will be in there as well. And then also uh, I'm more. Uh, they had wrote about the last update, which was great. Um, and, and this time, uh, Oliver Hoslam, um, he wrote about Sofa here as well. So three really nice articles about the new update, which feels great because, you know, I put a lot of work into this stuff and anytime anyone appreciates it, it's super nice. But it's not all about the press. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I think is really important is just people's feedback in general. Um, so tons of Twitter uh, responses, emails, posts on the forum. So thank you everyone who reached out and provided feedback, even if it was uh, like criticism and constructive criticism. That's that's all stuff that I wanna hear. So thank you, appreciate it. Been trying to like figure out how to eventually get to like 3.0. Like when when is that moment? Um, well, the moment is now. So. What I'm gonna start planning is SOFA 3.0 and what that means. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to uh, walk through that now and just kind of share in progress stuff because it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit to, to kind of plan this stuff out and build it. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to share this uh, over the next few weeks, months as it's being built. This The SOFA roadmap is accessible to anyone. Uh, so if you go to uh, the SOFA website, sofahq.com, at the very bottom, there'll be a link that says roadmap. You can access this at any time. Um, I do keep this up to date whenever I do have something new to add to it. So you'll be able to see like what's in progress. So right now you'll see, um, I'm just working on a few few little bug fixes for um, SOFA uh, 2.13.1. So that'll be coming out shortly. So that's being wrapped up. But everything that's here in short term, and you'll notice uh, the little 3.0 tag here, so I'm, I'm starting to work on well, what is SOFA 3.0 and what's gonna be in there. So let's get into it. So number one, Super SOFA, which is the working title, um, <laughs> not to be confused with, uh, what is it, Super, Super Follows on Twitter? Yeah. Um, I thought of this before that and now everyone's gonna think it's the same thing, but it's not. Uh, so anyway, this is going to be an optional pro subscription to SOFA. And I think the thing to note here is that this will be for all new stuff, right? So as the app exists today, all the features that are there today that you don't have to pay for, pay for are still going to be there. So you, this is not like a bait and switch. Uh, you're, if you don't want to pay for this, that's fine. You can keep using the app as is today. No big deal. Uh, but there's some features uh, and some improvements to the app that have been really been building over the past few years that uh, people have written in about. I've been thinking about that kind of thing. And now that uh, you know people have been using the app for a little while, I have a better sense of what that is. So the initial features, I have a, a bunch of ideas for this in the future, but there's, there's just initial features at first. So number one is going to be notes for items. This is 
the most requested current feature right now. And basically this will just be, um, this will actually be pretty simple uh, from a UI perspective. Um, but it's basically just gonna be like simple plain text notes for items, uh, items in your list. And this, the, the kind of like job of a note can serve a couple different purposes, but essentially if I, let's say I add a movie to a list from a friend who recommended it, I may not go back to that movie for a month or a couple months or whatever length of time. And by the time I go back, I kind of forget why I put it there. And I may want to still have it there, I just, I just can't remember, right? Because when you're kind of prioritizing what you want to watch or read, that kind of thing, recommendations from friends or if you saw it from a certain source can actually be super helpful and help you decide what you want to do next. So um, I think notes are going to be kind of cool because they're going to be fairly flexible with what you can do. Uh, but notes are going to be exclusively a pro feature that you have to pay for. The next one is activity improvements. Um, this is going to be like a combo. So I've been wanting to improve activity for a while because it's it's really just like a, a simple list, like, you know, top to bottom, sorted by date. Um, but it it's needed some love for a while, so that's what I'm gonna be focused on uh, next. And the, the free version that everyone's gonna get is the improvements to the layout and the design of it, and the ability to uh, filter uh, based on like, hey, just show me the movies I watched, or just show me the video games that played, that kind of thing. And then, uh, a fun little thing that will be paid uh, is the getting stats for your stuff, for your activity. So you'll be able to see like, you know, how many books you read this year versus last year, that kind of thing. So this isn't fully fleshed out, but um, this is the direction this is headed. So if we go back to the super sofa, um, so again, you'll see notes, activity improvements. The other thing you'll get is um, access to all themes. So as of today, uh, the only way that Sofa can make money is to sell themes one by one. So, th and there's over 70 themes today. And I have ideas for more, like plenty more themes. And the prices for those themes range, ranges, um, but you, know, you buy one theme, it's an in-app purchase, and then it's yours. Um, but if you do Super Sofa, uh, you will have access to all themes. You won't have to like buy them individually. You just get all of them um, and any future ones as well. So uh, it's kind of worth it just for the themes if you think about it, because that's a lot of themes. You would have to spend, uh, <laughs> if you wanted all the themes, you have to spend well over $70, probably closer to like a hundred bucks. And uh, now we're gonna get into pricing. So pricing uh, is gonna be if you just want to pay monthly, it's going to be $3.99, so four bucks. And then if you want to opt for the annual subscription, it'll be uh, $35.99, so 36 bucks. So, which is a 25% savings over the monthly if you opt to do that. I'm trying to think through the free trial stuff. I know there's like one week free trial, two week free trial, that kind of thing. So I don't, I don't have any like solid thoughts on that or does it even need a free trial? I have no idea. Um, but this is, this is where this is currently headed. So curious to hear any feedback from folks. Um, but there will be a paid, obviously a paid option here because, uh, there's a lot of interesting ideas that are going to be going to be coming out that, um, having this, this, uh, subscription revenue, is going to be able to support it long-term, which is great. Uh, and, uh, detail pages, these have needed love for a really long time. I'm gonna be focusing on that. There's a new prioritization workflow that I'm working on, and I don't wanna to give too many details right now because I think I think it's gonna be kind of fun and uh, kind of wanna surprise people a little bit. Um, and then a <laughs> not so exciting trash bin. Um, but this gets into uh, kind of some, some, uh, some safety in the app, right? So, Say you delete something and even when you go to delete something now, I put a little little like modal up and saying like, are you sure you want to delete it? Like, are you sure? 
And if you do that, uh, it's gone forever. You can't get it back. So this is gonna be a, a, just another level of safety where when you delete something, it goes into the trash bin. And then if you fully wanna delete it, you take it out of the trash bin, right? So just a little bit of safety for when we make mistakes, like we all do, that's life. So uh, that's the quick overview for for Sofa 3.0, um, no release date at this point because I, <laughs> I haven't actually started working on it yet. This has all been like planning phases. I like to spend time uh, just kind of like thinking and writing about what stuff is gonna be before I go sketch anything or start coding anything. So um, I am very excited about this because I think the app is in a really strong position to makes sense where it it's worth paying for whereas before i feel like it was always kind of being i would have to like arbitrarily limit things and now i feel like i have a good sense of what the what the threshold should be for oh this is something that's free this is something that's paid and it doesn't feel like a, a bait and switch and it feels like it's actually worth it so uh very excited for this anyway thanks for watching i appreciate it and uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, feedback, just uh, reach out. See ya.